Good evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness again. Uh, a few weeks ago, we um, took you on a shopping trip, and it was called Let's Go Shopping. And um, I had ran into a, a painting by a local artist and um, that I got a lot of calls about. Everybody really liked it. And so, as coincidence has it, um, I was, we were sitting in the kitchen the other day talking and I got a phone call and the artist himself called and wanted to know had I gotten his painting and I said, well, no. And he was nice enough to stick a, a print of this very nice painting in my door. His name is Al King and the name of the painting is called Child of Woe. And because I had such a reaction to it, I thought I was going to show it to you again. Um, now, now each, each time that we, um, we put it on camera, it looked a little different, so I don't know how it's going to show up today. It's upside down. Oh, it's upside down. Well, no wonder it would look different. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. And the friends really liked it, so I thought I'd show it to you again, now that I have my own copy. And it's just really moving how uh, there is concern on the creator's face of what we're doing to our earth. And that's why I'm showing it to you again. And uh, feel free to give the artist a call. He just loves to talk about his work. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave that like that. Now, the name of the show today is Fear is Not a T-Shirt. And the reason we named it like that, uh, my my good friend Monica Ryan Smith from Anchorage, Alaska is with us again. Hi. And uh, we usually do everything twice. We do, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the friends liked our show on chaos. Good. They did. They mm -hmm. did. I'm glad. And one of the things they asked about, they said, well, how come you never talked about fear? And what do you think I told them? We we're saving that for another day. That's right. <laughs> so this is the other day. So today we're going to talk about fear. Mm. Um, if we had established that chaos is usually something that we have n little or no control over. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, we looked up the word fear, mm -hmm. which the definition is a little different. Would you be nice enough to tell the friends what fear is? Well, according to Funk and Wagnall, mm -hmm. I, I like. The I name can't of, even say that. <laughs> I like the name of that dictionary, Funk and Wagnall. Um, It's an activating feeling aroused by awareness of actual or threatening trouble, uh, etc. or for example, dread or terror. A feeling of deep reverential awe and dread, such as in fear of our creator. Um, a continuing state or attitude of fright, dread, or alarmed concern. So fear is a feeling. It's a feeling. It's a feeling, an emotion. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the, let's talk about the fear of the creator. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to go there first before we go to the rest of it. Um, I don't un, I don't look at it like you have to be scared of your creator. It's, right. it's more of a, awe. of an honoring, being in awe. No? Mm -hmm. And that's where, uh, that's where that is uh, interrelated or mm -hmm. changeable. Awe and fear mm -hmm. um, can be can be the same thing mm -hmm. in this case. In this case, in yeah. re relating to our Creator or our God or whatever we would choose mm -hmm. to to call Him. So that's her. <laughs> him, him or her. her. Him her. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not the kind of fear we want to talk about. We want yeah. to talk about genuine concerns. Yeah. That people have. Yeah. And things that are scary to them. I liked when you put it on t uh, fear is, is or is not a t-shirt. It's, it's not, not a t-shirt. But sometimes we wear it like a t-shirt and we're not even aware of it. But then it will say, no fear. That's a brand name. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> that's a t-shirt. So, yeah. Yeah, that's how we arrived at that. Um, what we did is we, we sort of went around town and um, talked to several groups of people and ask them what their fears are. And, and I did this in three, in three categories. Uh, the clip is, is just one clip, but I entered a, 
an environment with upper class people with money, you know. And then I went from there straight to the bus station, mm -hmm. to the people that have no money. Mm -hmm. And then where did I go third? Um, kind of middle uh, of the road. Mm -hmm. We'll have to, we can watch and see. Uh, I, well, anyway, so then I write the other people where they were sort of sort of in between. So you have people from different walks of life. They all live in the same town, and each one of them um, looked at it different. Now, when I got to the bus station, mm -hmm. um, I had a big purse over my arm. And a, and a camcorder on in the other hand, and one lady, she says, who are you? And I said, well, I'm trying to do some interviews for TCTV. So she immediately asked me for a badge, which was good, but mm -hmm. I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And um, she wanted ID, which is good, mm -hmm. but I didn't have one. And I thought everybody was watching TCTV, so I didn't <laughs> find it necessary to do that. So I offered um, for her, you know, for her, peace of mind mm -hmm. that she could call the station and find out, you know, I'm really taking pictures of, mm -hmm. for the reason that I said I did. So I think that was her fear and, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. and she either called, uh, she either thought I was, you know, bluffing or she decided that I must be pretty legitimate. Yeah. And that was the first, you know, physical fear that I ran into that day. Now, as you know, lots of times when we're in the studio, we hear things. Mm -hmm. And we do things, even though this is a fear story and not like do do do, not not like that. But if we hear um, a lot of interferences and noises, uh, they're not actual noises. There is a whole busload of Korean singers and dancers. They're doing things out in in the yard, and because um, they're drums, and there are very many of them. So if you hear background music, that is uh, blended in. Mm -hmm. Beautiful By coincidence, mm -hmm. wonderful customs, yeah. mm -hmm. and so, so if you do hear something, that's what that would be. So I, th what I think we're going to do is we're going to look at the clip about now that is not drums. That sounds that's like a helicopter. A helicopter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to watch the clip and see what people's fears are. Okay, and th yeah. this was filmed in Olympia, so. We always have some noises. Isn't it interesting? See, sometimes we put things in there. Are they, do you think that by, if that time ever comes, you will have found a way how to work around it? I hope so. I think um, as I'm getting older, it's, I'm settling with that. But as I think about it, it's, it still causes quite a lot of anxiety. But it's getting, it's changing. It's okay, why? Well, thank you very much. You're welcome ask you what your biggest fear is. My biggest fear is the unknown and not knowing what's going to happen. I don't like, I don't like losing control. I don't like knowing what's going to happen if I haven't experienced something before. And so it makes dealing with life difficult because there's all sorts of fears that you don't know what's going to happen. So do you think that maybe at one time you'll learn how to work around that or find a solution? I would like to think so. I think probably the only way to do that though would be to let go of, of the fear of fear itself. So there's nothing to fear but fear itself and if you aren't afraid of life and you just go at everything with a vengeance and not worry about what the outcome's going to be, I think that would probably be the easiest way to get around it. That's really good advice. I thank you very much. You're welcome asking people today what their fears are. My fear is if we were to have a natural disaster, mm -hmm. I would not be able to find my children. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that uh, you can work around it and remedy that? 
Possibly. Possibly. Okay. You, you want to even know like how I feel I would? Well, yeah, sure, you can do that. <laughs> um, I mean, I know you can have your contacts, so how to communicate destination points. Uh -huh. Or I can just keep them by my side for their whole lives. <laughs> It'd be kind of complicated, <laughs> wouldn't very. it? Yeah. That's my main fear. Okay. Well, I thank you very much. You're asking people today what their fears are, so would you like to share that with me? My fear would be driving in rush hour traffic on the freeway in downtown Seattle. Okay. Um, so how would you work around it if you had to? I would get off the freeway and take um, alternate routes. Well, that's really smart advice, you know, because I do that all the time. And now uh, it's noisy. There's a gentleman with a blower of some kind. Okay, so you, let's summarize it. Fear on the freeway. Mm -hmm. And the other one would be walking in really dark parking lots late at night by myself. And how would do we remedy that? I would not be in really dark parking lots late at night. That's very good advice. Thank you. Asking people today what their fears are. So would you like to share that with me? Uh, I have a fear uh, when I'm alone at night or with my child of hearing noises I can't identify. And that makes my heart race. And uh, that's a physical fear mm -hmm. that I have. So what would your advice be? To other people that experience, how do you deal with that? I just lay very quietly and listen and try to uh, identify them. And if I do, then I feel fine. If I don't, 911. 911, that's and great. And I've done that. That's great. <laughs> so, anyway, that worked out real well one time. Okay, bye. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I was going to ask you about your fears. Yeah, um, I was thinking about it, and I think my ultimate fear is like a supernatural evil things. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, and how I would remedy it, or how I do, you can't really get rid of, you know, supernatural or anything. So I just try and stay away of, stay away from things that I get negative feelings about. I guess that's really good advice. And it's really windy. Got it? Yes. I can hardly stand on my feet here. Okay, why? Well, thank you very much people about their fears today. Would you like to share your fears with me? Sure. Um, let's see. I am afraid of heights. Um, mm -hmm. When I go hiking, I can't go down steep cliffs or up steep cliffs. And I panic right in the middle if I do and can't move. And I'm also afraid of spiders. They're creepy and crawly. Any suggestions how you'll work around that? Oh, gosh. Spiders I just stay clear of if mm -hmm. I can. And um, I don't know what to do about heights. Well, you know, each fear is as well to one person, and maybe it means nothing to the next person. And so then, well, if I was scared of heights, I probably wouldn't go hiking. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's nice to go hiking on flats, flat it, areas. That's flat areas, yeah. yeah. So there you go. That's how you work around it. There you go. Cool. So you already have the answer. Okay. And I thank you. Thank you. Your fears today. Would you like to tell me your fears? I'm afraid of heights. And how do you think you could work around that? I don't know. Try, try going on bridges and stuff. Try going to higher places. I don't know. Just try to overcome them. Okay. Well, I thank you very much. Okay, well, we're asking people today what their fears are. So would you like to tell me yours? No, I've got no fears. Well, that's really great because if we can achieve that, the world would be a much better place. We wouldn't have to be living paranoia all the time. Would you agree? Yes. Okay, I well, agree. thank you very much. Right. I was talking to your friend, and then you said you would give us your opinion also. I have no fears either. Um, I don't think you can really get a fear unless you've tried everything, so I don't know. I don't really have one. Well, that's be wonderful. Good, yeah. If we can just okay. all achieve that, we will be just well, fine. Thank you. I think people today what their fears are, so would you be nice enough to share yours? Sure. I'm afraid of the bathroom because, because um, someone's was, like, watching me or something. Every time I see a dark <laughs> shadow, 
And sometimes I use brain work, go in the corner of the back, go in the corner of, um, if I'm taking a shower, um, I would hide on the way in the corner is that I'm afraid of it. It's like someone's watching you the whole time. Do you, do you have anyone to help you with that, or you know how to work around it? I don't know how to work around it, but it's just that I'm afraid of spiders also in the back, especially when I take a shower or so. Okay, I'm going to give you a phone number, okay? Okay. And thank you very much. Yeah. Huh? Freeways. Freeways. Yeah. Yeah, they mine too. So you go to back roads? No. Do you go out of town at all? No, a little. Do you think you ever get over that? Uh, yeah, a little. A little or, a, or just afraid? Afraid. Yeah. Well, I thank you very much. Office depots where I ran into some of the friends. So tell me, dear, what are you afraid of? I am afraid of very little. The only thing I have fear is, I guess nothing. I'm not afraid to die. Just afraid. I guess maybe I'd be afraid if I lost my family. Mm -hmm. How do you, what would you tell people how to work around their fears and there are many that people have? Well, you, if you set yourself uh, with a lot of goals and work to attain your goals um, and don't be afraid to fail, then I think the, the fears itself will, will, you have to be comfortable with who you are as a person. Well, that's a wonderful answer and I thank you very, very much. You're welcome. You know what happened? There were really solutions they were, they recognized their fears. And um, I was kind of happy that I was able to uh, address people on such a large range of, mm -hmm. of groups, you know. And we do have background music. We do. Isn't that great? The drums. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to dance a little. Um, I was really impressed with how they, how people answered the, those. They're, they're, they were all small. Mm -hmm. They were not to put their, their fears down or negate them in any way, but they weren't afraid of the world ending. Exactly. They weren't afraid of wars and um, they were healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and they also had solutions. They did. And they were willing to uh, compromise and uh, work around them. It wasn't stopping them in their tracks and mm -hmm. keeping them from attaining things that they wanted to do. Yeah, I was really impressed too. Like yeah. everybody had had a general idea. Now, at the same token, sometimes we know what the solution is, but we're afraid to look at it like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's when it becomes that T-shirt. Exactly. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, the masks that that we have in our set today. Those mm -hmm. are the the masks from Peru that is mentioned in the in my book. And. Um, they were just one wonderful mask, but my the lady Mamie that I had in, in the mm -hmm. cropper was me when I went across country. She actually thought they were shrunken heads, and she was just terrified. And um, I didn't really tell her the difference, and sometimes I feel a little bad about that, but that was about the only way I could get to go where I needed to go, because she argued with me all the time. And so I would just go like that, and she look at these heads and get quiet. So that was kind of mean on my part. But she was really scared of those masks. And and he, and then we have um, scorpions, insects. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Snakes, bugs, creepy crawlies, centipedes. Mm -hmm. And then in an esc people, people are afraid of other people. Mm -hmm. um, now you had a real issue with snakes for a long time. I did. Um, Snakes like me. Mm -hmm. it's, it uh, seems that they like me. They have shown up so many, physically shown up in my life so many times and in my dreams as well. Mm -hmm. um, when I was 10, I was on a camping trip and we were in the mountains and I woke up with a um, rattlesnake inside the sleeping bag 
nestled on my nice warm tummy. It had just probably come in to get out of the cold. Well, that snake was maybe three feet long, but as it took off and went across my body and across my face, it took that snake 10 years and it was 72 miles long before it finally went away. And um, fortunately, I was still. And for some reason, the fear I was feeling was, because I was very frightened, the fear I was feeling though stayed within me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a kind of a controlled thing. It, I didn't start screaming and yelling and thrashing about because um, I thought the bite would be worse. <laughs> I have no idea. I've not been bitten by a snake that I know of in this life. Mm -hmm. So um, so that one. And then when we lived in Texas, um, our land would flood. And I think every water moccasin within a 30-mile range would come and sit around on our little island of dry, dry land. I would open my door, and they'd be on the porch and under the porch. and. Um, I would walk around with, my husband brought me a um, snake charmer shotgun and I would just walk around, <laughs> get out of my way. But I really don't like doing that. I'd, I'd mm -hmm. prefer that they went away. Um, and, and then in dreams. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then unknown to me, uh, when you joined me on that on the trip, I picked you up in Albuquerque and mm -hmm. I, had a, I had a dead snake in the jaw. Yes, and, you did. Mm -hmm. And you were kind enough to put it out of my sight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you did try to work around that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you need it out in front. Now I'm, um, I'm a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I can handle them if I have to. I prefer not to. Um, a, a friend pointed out the other day when we, in our conversation that when you have a fear, mm -hmm. if you can walk toward it and face it and go into it, it kind of it dissipates, um, and I'm not talking about the kind that saves your life. I'm, I'm talking about those little ones in inside that keep you from doing things you might like to do. Um, if there was a king snake across the road and I wanted to go over there, and there was something I really want, it, I'd have the choice of staying on this side and not getting what I want out of fear, or knowing that it, it's a non-poisonous snake stepping over and going on. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten friends with a couple of king snakes now, so I could I could now step over and go get mm -hmm. it. And I can go to the zoo and watch them mm -hmm. before I couldn't even go in the in the zoo, in the snake house. Yeah, but you're actively working on, on I overcoming am, your fear. I am, because I don't want to be governed by it. Mm -hmm. And I have others. Uh, for years, I was afraid of flying mm -hmm. because of a, an incident in an airplane. And I just, I was in the travel industry. And if I wanted to get somewhere, it was fly. So mm -hmm. it presented me the opportunity to get over that. So now the way you work around it, you open the door and you jump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only once. <laughs> I had a fear of heights. And I, I, I wanted to, um, I thought maybe if I skydived, I'd get over it. Uh -huh. But I'm still uncomfortable on a balcony or on a mountaintop without mm -hmm. a railing. But I still will go up on the 10th floor. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's work. Yes, people are scared of dogs. I mean, we yeah. can go right down the line. Dogs, mm -hmm. cats, cats. Um, just terrify, uh, terrify the cats. Your little representatives um, of ETs. Mm -hmm. People have a fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. I think the unknown. Uh, alligators? Uh, no, nah, I have. I love alligators, you know. So mm -hmm. I make it a point to buy pictures and and surround myself with crocodiles and alligators because they make me feel good, they give me comfort. But do you walk among live ones? <laughs> I think I, I could. You think you mm -hmm. could? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, knowing you, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a very few things that scare me, mm -hmm. but then I have a paranoia, which is riding with anybody, mm -hmm. you know. And is, is, is a pa that paranoia fear-based, would you say? I believe it was at one time, um, I was in a car one time, it was a little, uh, those little English cars, uh, what are they MGBs. called? MGBs. MGs, yeah. And uh, the gentleman ran us under an 18-wheeler, mm -hmm. and um, when they got me out, he had been decapitated. So I, I still have uh, respect for trucks, so that's why I got a CB and I, I talked to them, you know. But you see, I'm okay as long as I drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, my vision is off on, mm -hmm. I'm about a foot and a half off over here, so everything is in my lap. So at, at one time, I was almost at the point where I could deal with that, but then I came to visit you. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the gentleman, that you were a passenger in his car, and it was snowy and very, very snowy and very, very cold, and he had a, an epileptic seizure while he was driving. Mm -hmm. And you were in a strange car, strange driving conditions, but um, and you managed. Mm -hmm. My higher self did. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. So that, that kind of fed into that fear mm -hmm. of being a passenger and not being yeah. in control of a driving. And I can understand it. Um, it makes it, uh, fears can make us very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. very, and they're very real. I'm not negating anyone's fears mm -hmm. because to them they're very real. And mine are very real to mm -hmm. me. Um, I just, I like the, um, to work at not letting it be govern me. Mm -hmm. um, and fear comes in handy. It'll warn you of, of a danger, mm -hmm. uh, real or perceived, um, so you can work with it, um, mm -hmm. use it to one's advantage. I just don't want to be paralyzed by it if I can mm -hmm. avoid it. Uh, well, anything that's connect, uh, I'm not fearful of anything actually, except that one thing mm -hmm. that almost borders on a mental illness, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel if it's connected with my work, I mm -hmm. can work around it. And if I, if it's not connected with my work, I don't need to be doing it. And so that's how I work around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can we can help let it work for us. Mm -hmm. um, and and to remember that it's just a feeling. Mm -hmm. It isn't anything that is tangible. Mm -hmm. And maybe that'll help some people that have fears that are keeping them inside their homes. Mm -hmm. That if they can get it in to replace it, that it, the, the, their mindset, that it's not something tangible. Mm -hmm. It's just a feeling, mm -hmm. perception. It was not my intention to build on the fears of the people that we saw in the clips. Right. Um, so I'm not going to detail it, but I do know what the fear is with the, with the young lady that has, that they see the shadows in the bathroom, and mm -hmm. that's why I gave it a phone number, because I immediately mm -hmm. uh, knew where they get going with that. Then, of course, you have the media. Um, the media, mm -hmm. uh, you made reference to, to the aliens here a while ago, and these are, these are the, you know, that's what they tell us they look like, which, mm -hmm. which they don't. And yeah, which mm -hmm. they don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, so I can see why people would really, really have. It, it, again, it's another industry. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Again, I think fear is an industry. Mm -hmm. uh, um, let's. We can sell you a car alarm to feed into your fear of your car being stolen. Mm -hmm. And these things, they do happen. I'm not saying they don't. Mm -hmm. um, and bars on your windows to keep someone from coming in. Um, electrical systems, alarm systems. Mm -hmm. I went to visit a friend in Houston, Texas, and she had her house up for sale. She had a, an alarm system on her house, so to get in her house, she had to push buttons, and it went beep, 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 and you go in, and then when the door closed, it was beep, 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 to lock the door back up, and, all, and she had bars on her windows. And the realtor came to show the house, and a couple came, and the couple each came in their own car, and we, we, we knew they were there, and we watched them. She didn't, un she didn't undo her alarm system until they were closer to the house. But the, the realtor got out and went, beep, 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 set alarm on her car. And the woman got out and beep, 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 and the husband. So they had all of these alarm. There were five alarm systems there. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't an, it was based on fears. Mm -hmm. Now, you suppose it had been a buyer trying to buy this house that didn't want to be locked in, wanted to. Didn't want to, you know. Perhaps, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here again. And part of the house, um, it, you subscribe to those systems. You don't just put them in. Mm -hmm. You subscribe to someone to monitor them. So part of her selling the house was she had to pay for a year's worth, for nine more months of this monitoring system, whether the people were going to use it or not. And with her paying it, she was responsible if false alarms went off. Even after she sold yeah, her they, house. Yeah, they start charging you for mm -hmm. that now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So they're, they're again, the industry. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a little, uh, a little story that I read many, many years ago. I was rather young, actually, and um, I think that fits in here. This gentleman, his fear was to, to be eaten by alligators, which sounds really far-fetched. 
So I guess he went to therapy and the gentleman said, well, you got to get over your fear, go to Florida. So he went to the Everglades and it later turned out, and that's why it was in the paper, this gentleman had went there for that purpose and he slipped and he actually got eaten by, a, I think it was either 11 or 9, nine or 11 foot. A big one. Three-legged alligator. Can three you imagine that? alligator. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Which leads into sometimes I think we generate, um, when we live with a fear, we, we generate it coming to us mm -hmm. in reality. Now some fears are based on something that already happened mm -hmm. and then the fear becomes known to us and perhaps underneath there's a fear that we're going to be attacked. Um, when I was a ch uh, about 11 years old, no I was 13, 13 years old, and my mother was always telling me, stay out of dark alleys, mm -hmm. you know, don't walk in unsafe places. The things you tell children to be safe about, don't talk to strangers and all of this. And I took a shortcut to get home because I was going to be late mm -hmm. and it was night and I took a shortcut through an alley and there was someone there and I whatever they were doing they decided I did I, I think I startled them mm -hmm. and they turned around and and they had uh, it was a young man and he had a little pocket knife mm -hmm. and whatever he was doing I think I startled him and he just reacted and and he stabbed me in the cheek mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> my fears took over. The adrenaline just rushed, and I just made him quite uncomfortable and, and took off, and let him go to the floor or the street, and then I took off running and went home. And um, I think underneath sometime from all of that programming that I'd heard ever since I was a child, I, I think I kind of generated that mm -hmm. and brought it to myself. And by generating it means not that I wanted it to happen, it was just that I believed sometime it would happen, mm -hmm. and so I may have manifested it. Of course, I didn't think that way then, but I, looking back on it, it's very possible. Now, last time I was visiting you in Anchorage, and Monica, I want to remind the friends again that she's a wonderful person, that uh, that, that is your connection to Anchorage, Col uh, great, Anchorage, Colorado. <laughs> Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska <laughs> on Channel 44 that is sharing, you know, uh, with, some, uh, with, with some of us here. She's our networker and mm -hmm. she imports this show to Anchorage. Um, anyway, I went to come and see you and you was in the middle of taking a class on racial... Uh, healing racism. Mm -hmm. Healing racism. And do you remember what the name of that was? The Color of Fear. The Color of Fear. Mm -hmm. And I only got to attend one time, and I thought that was really, really interesting. It, the, the, this tape is available through the Baha'i mm -hmm. uh, Baha'i faith. Um, they're all, they're nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, some li libraries even have the movie The Color of Fear, and it's quite enlightening. Mm -hmm. um, and that one it deals with racism, and it deals with how people don't see racism mm -hmm. and how others use fear to deny that racism is even there. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I was had not a prejudiced self anywhere in the world with me, um, da, da, da. <laughs> and I started going to this class and I found mm -hmm. out that I have racist tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, so now that I'm aware of them, mm -hmm. uh, working, I remember I wrote Omar uh, and said, mm -hmm. I'm a racist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that was a fear for me mm -hmm. that I would could be a racist. That's so the by key to the whole thing. Yeah. So th yeah, that's my little bridge. Uh -huh. You thought you was. And so the fear of you thinking that, mm -hmm. created that's it. what happened because you don't have a prejudice bone in your body. <laughs> but to you, that was yeah. a possibility. Yeah. You see. So by, by having the education mm -hmm. and facing it, um, mm -hmm. able to let it go. And I, um, and I think that's one of the things uh, that I work with my, with my healing practice mm -hmm. is helping people release their, recognizing and releasing their fears. Mm -hmm. and, and some are very fearful about coming. Sometimes it'll take them three or four appointments before to get over they get home. there because they're in mm -hmm. fear of what, what um, a friend told me last night. Mm -hmm. I have a lady up there that's a friend of mine and is a very powerful healer, and I'm leery of going to her because she might find one of my 
deep, dark secrets I'm not ready to let go of yet. And I was sharing this with a client last night, and she said, that's why I didn't want to come, because I thought you would find my deepest, dark secrets, and I might have to let them go. Um, so fear. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you see, we are, uh, we are also intuitives. And there's a lady in town that would really wanted to meet me, but she was scared of psychics. Mm -hmm. She thought I was going to read her mind. Yeah. And and so well we don't do that. No we, we don't. We don't if we have too many thoughts of our own, we just don't I'm too busy. We're too busy <laughs> to read your mind unless there's something that we need to you know, if you say, Can you help me with an issue? I might then we do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you invite me, mm -hmm. um and then again it's not really reading mind. Mm -hmm. Uh it comes from practice and experience. Body language mm -hmm. will tell me things, facial expressions will tell me things, but I don't mind delve. <laughs> <laughs> and neither do you. Yeah, so so, um, so so if people invite you, that doesn't mean you can come over and I, I re, you know, I right. see what I can do. It's, right. it's only when you request help at which time. You know, that's why I don't deal with relationships. Mm -hmm. Because in order to to answer those questions, I have to invade someone else's space. Yes. And that is, in my opinion, that's not even correct because that creates a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. To get back to this lady for a minute, so what we did is... Um, Someone invited, uh, well, they went for lunch, and somebody invited me to come along. Mm -hmm. And we had a really nice time. She found out I was actually a person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, see, so we, we, can, we can work around these different fears. The scariest thing we could find, uh, there is nothing fearful in my house. We looked everywhere, mm -hmm. and we... It's all tranquil. I mean, even the masks, they are comforting to me. Yeah. See, and I'm crazy about gargoyles. Mm -hmm. I think they are just so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and they were made to look kind of on the fierce side for guardian, to be guardians. Exactly. Um, and other people are afraid of dogs. Dogs, yeah. Oh, uh, poor little thing. And I thought, I think this is cute. You know? mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's our perspective. Mm -hmm. So Again. the scariest thing we could come up with for Was some of you is... At best, the gargoyle. This is a mask that I ended up. Uh, I, I had inherited two wonderful, two wonderful Italian statues that I was never going to do anything with. So I got to Colorado one day and I wanted to sell the statues. Well, there was no demand for masks and things in that in that vicinity. So the gentleman traded me all the African art that he had for those two statues, mm -hmm. and this is how. Um, I think it's a beautiful mask, and a lot of masks were made to represent power and yes. boundaries and mm -hmm. boundaries. Boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh, in Alaska, we have the the different uh, cultural mm -hmm. tribes there, and some of the masks are quite fierce. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what they're for, mm -hmm. and I think. Um, they were used for protection against, some are, are just for stories, some were, were used to scare off mm -hmm. <laughs> other tribes. Um, mm -hmm. So fear can be used in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And then on the alien agenda, for instance, <laughs> um, you know, so much media and so much hype about being abducted. And, and out of 10 stories you hear, Six is probably telling it the same way, you know, mm -hmm. they just swoop you out of your bed and out the roof you go and they do these horrible things to you. And, um, but then there is the other four that have an altogether different story to tell. Different experience. And some of us believe that those things are reality, mm -hmm. you know. And so to work around the fear of that is a whole, is a whole other story. So what happens is I believe that with the alien agenda, is they now have become shapeshifters, where they appear like people or things that we is pleasant to us and that we are accustomed mm -hmm. to. So it doesn't create fear, and we can deal with that. Mm -hmm. If you're paralyzed with fear, you can't think, mm -hmm. can't uh, feel or react. You're just so perhaps, um, which would fit in with mm -hmm. them shapeshifting and making themselves mm -hmm. presentable. Now, when we were at the Hopi uh, reservation in Keynes Canyon, uh, that night there were, uh, we, I didn't know if you were sleeping. Yeah. So I didn't know were they dogs or were they coyotes or what 
what were they? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were just sitting in a circle, just howling, and eventually I woke you up. And I looked out the window and went, Lillian, they're just dogs. They're dogs, but do <laughs> No, she's, they're not dogs. <laughs> so, yeah, they're just dogs. Clunk, I went right back to sleep. But do you remember what they turned out to be? Yes, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> they were, they were Hopi. They were shapeshifters, mm -hmm. and that's how they appeared, to s unnoticed to see who we were. To see and who we were, and to see, I think if we hadn't if been okayed by that, we probably wouldn't have gotten very much further down the road. And we would not have been able to do what we did accomplish mm, in no. that area. And then, uh, but because we did ask questions, that's so we accidentally found out if we hadn't asked. Ask questions. We would have would have went right over our head. We would have mm -hmm. never known the like, difference. Oh, pack of dogs. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and perhaps for me, if I would have thought that that's what mm -hmm. they were, um, I would have reacted different. Mm -hmm. So by being thinking they were just dogs, it fit in with my concept. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're inside. I'm going back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and and sometimes things react so quick we don't have time to get scared now those are the ones that sneak up on me oh, yeah it's after the fact, <laughs> you know that. yeah some of the work that you do um mm -hmm. I, I i would assume that if you knew what it was beforehand you would either hesitate or not do it at all nobody in their right mind <laughs> would do some of the work that i do hello and that is um an alarm did someone step out a door, an alarm door? I don't door? know. Well, you know, we had, um, the, the friends probably didn't know we were gone. Mm -hmm. We had a little fire alarm go off here, which goes right in the fear thing here. Mm -hmm. But first we were just kept right on talking over the buzzing. Mm -hmm. like, oh, well. And then someone came in. It's time to evacuate the building. Woo. <laughs> But just, you, you see, I, I had a house burned down one time. Oh. And so sometimes when something happens to you once, you get real fearful it happening again. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself, uh, I double check things. Uh, I mean, my house blowing up actually wasn't anything that I caused, but everything that happens to us, it kind of, it's a lesson. And if you heed that lesson, then you don't have to repeat it. That's true. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you with mm -hmm. that, yes. Uh, it's, and so back to the taught behavior, once you know something, then you don't do it the second time. Hopefully. Ho <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. yeah. I think the worst scenario in repeating things over and over is in relationships. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think since fear is our subject, Mm -hmm. Fear gets into that too. Mm -hmm. um, you have a deep feelings for someone and then you get fearful that they're going to leave or, mm -hmm. or they're not going to treat you well or you get fear sets you up to, to, to leave a relationship before it has a chance to, to develop and some of that is based on things that we've in, incurred in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of set the other person up to be like what we knew. So we'll really sabotage ourselves. Yes, I mm -hmm. think we are quite capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, my current husband and I are uh, working on that because at times I will get, he'll say something and I'll get an expression on my face and he interprets it from his first wife, how oh. she reacted mm -hmm. to something he said. And I'm, I don't know if I think like her or not. And so then he stops reacting to me. He, he's reacting to me from that fear-based space. Mm -hmm. And then so it's like, who are you hearing talking, me or Linda? Mm -hmm. And um, he'll ask himself. But it took, us a, it took him a long time for him to say that certain expression reminds me of. And we, would, we can work around it. And uh, he gets certain expressions that remind me of my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that one. Yeah, so, so talking about it is, is probably okay then. Right. Now, now I'm, I'm very allergic to bees. I've never been, well, I'm allergic to American bees mm -hmm. because I've never been allergic to bees before. And um, I used to just go in a total panic, just seeing them coming now that I have spiritually grown, you know, grown as a person mm -hmm. where 
I understand that now. I just say, well, you know, you can really hurt me. You need to leave now because if you don't, um, I'm going to beat you to the punch. You know, so I'm not as fearful as I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and again, so there's some education. Mm -hmm. um, and more, and maybe that's a key. Mm -hmm. Different types of edu education. Um, parents learning, um, learning how to be parents. Mm -hmm. Um, and then their children learn more from them and gather even more knowledge. And it seems knowledge help abate fear. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't remember when I was a parent if I really, if I had no role models, I had nobody because mm -hmm. I was all by myself. I was in a, uh, my husband wasn't uh, happy about me having any kind of friends. Uh, he just came to a new country and I was very young, you know. So, so the model through that and learned as I went along, you know. And, and so now in modern day here, in, we do have different, you know, we have therapy. Mm -hmm. um, at one time, therapy was a luxury. At one time, therapy was almost taboo. It was something mm -hmm. you didn't, you had to be considered totally crazy mm -hmm. in order to get therapy. Yeah, so therapy is available, our friends are available, mm -hmm. uh, and we have learned how to be grandparents. Yeah, it's much easier being a grandparent because we don't have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I enjoy being a grandparent. Um, I was a fearful parent, mm -hmm. um, fearful that I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't doing it right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a common, common fear among parents, male, fathers and mothers, mm -hmm. that they're not doing it right. Um, but as a grandmother, I could, I could spoil mm -hmm. it if I want. And, and the nicest part about being a grandmother is when I don't want to be a grandmother anymore for that moment, I can give them back to their mothers. Send them home. <laughs> I can send them home. Exactly. So, so we have come a long ways. Yeah. Um, and we didn't get Were like we young overnight. <laughs> oh, I think so. Oh, uh, yeah. I think so, too. Now here is, is one that we've noticed in the last, um, of course I don't see you, I talk to you on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but physically I don't spend a lot of time with you, in, you know, because of the distance. And between the two of us, we've decided that um, it's almost scary to get old. Well, Yeah, there is a fear for me of getting old. And it's not the, get, the getting old and acquiring the age mm -hmm. and passing on to the next stage. What I don't like is, <laughs> don't like, That's and it's the one. is mm -hmm. the not having the um, stamina. Mm -hmm. And um, I get tired faster. Mm -hmm. Your mind and your body is not Yeah, the they're same. not they're not in sync mm -hmm. yet. Um, and I'm not sure I want... I'm not sure how I want that to to play out. Yeah, but it is it is a fear-based mm -hmm. thing. And then lots of times we have to fake how we're feeling because we feel inadequate. Yeah. Uh, not to be able to keep up with the rest of the world. Yeah, now, which leads me to something I, I read a while back, and, and um, most of the time I believe it, mm -hmm. and most of the time I can... Uh, adapt it, but as it's still sometimes a struggle, and that there's really only two motivators. It's either fear or love, mm -hmm. and if you're in fear, you can't be in love. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, I can see that, but every once in a while, I want my my mind doesn't want to let me have that belief. Mm -hmm. Now you talk about something you call Jedi. Oh yeah, Jedi. It's um, J E D I. And the and there's, the J stands for oh um, boy you you did it to me again. I put you on the spot. <laughs> I'll try to help you a little bit. It is oh come on what are the J's? Uh, I know one is judgment, jealousy, judgment and jealousy, jealousy, envy and ego, mm -hmm. denial and doubt. Mm -hmm. That's the Jed, and if you can shed the Jed, you you'll. Uh, graduate to the I, mm -hmm. the I in you, the uh, mm -hmm. higher power, your, your, yeah. So I'm working on Jedi. Mm -hmm. I want to be a Jedi. <laughs> and my two that, um, I don't, I don't seem to have too much trouble with envy, but boy, 
judgment is, is one of those clouds that kind of goes through. And um, I'm working on just letting them go through and be released. And the other one is doubt. Mm -hmm. And you, you noticed for me, fortunately, mm -hmm. that by, I go through a six-week cycle and then you I get do. into doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it's brought to my attention, I can work, I can just kind of, oh, yeah, that's where I'm at. No wonder that feels strange. Mm -hmm. And let it go. Yeah, but, but you see, the thing is here, it's like Barbara McRae and I, we were talking at one time, she was real fearful of being by herself. Mm -hmm. And that was the utmost in her mind and in her being. Now, I found I find that pleasant. I find I that too. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mine would be, could be, mine could be the opposite of being stuck in a crowd mm -hmm. or having to live in a commune or sharing one bathroom with 40 people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't care for that. Um, so, so each fear is individually just as important and just as real to the person yes. uh, that is experiencing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the way I work around my not wanting to get in people's cars, I just drive my own or I don't go. And I, found, I find that easier than having to explain over and over and over mm -hmm why I feel that way. It's real to me, and that's how it is. And here's a judgment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I, it's a, it would be a judgment, or, and it's actually a judgment, not just an opinion. They're, they're one and the same, which I'm sure I've had arguments with or disagreements with people on that. But it's perhaps you're depriving someone of yourself and your knowledge by limiting yourself to staying home unless you drive. But then Just I've an idea. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's one back by that, Jill. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's why we can do this. this yeah. <laughs> we assumed that we didn't go to Canada because of my fear. Yes. When in reality... It turned out to be a, a car problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a car that the hood was not... Would not... But would not secure. It wasn't secure. Mm -hmm. and, and we could have had it pop open on mm -hmm. in the night, something like that, yeah. So as you can see, my fear still serves a purpose. It does. I didn't say that it didn't. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just realized that, so I'm very really happy about yeah, that. It does. Uh, I'm not saying that fear doesn't serve a purpose. Yeah. Listen, I want you to be clear on that. Yeah. And, I, and it's, I think it's wonderful because it's a lesson for me mm -hmm. that because that's the way I see something doesn't mean that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. Well. Same same thing here. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of hope we have um, shed a little light on, on these things for you. And here again, each person's fear is as severe as it is to the next person. And so, so but be patient with the people around you. They don't understand that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can almost leave that as a cliffhanger because who knows, you might have to come back and, um, you know, at another time. Yeah. We've, We've told you about our travels and about our relationships and things like that. And um, we did a show on chaos. And, um, we did. It's a while back. It's been a while back. And but one. They kind of fit together, don't they? Yeah, I think that's why some kind of way I became a series mm -hmm. because each show stands on its own, but it's always connected some kind of way. And so I believe that's where we are. And. Um, it just is it time to go already? Almost. Oh my. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost time to go. And so I guess all we're going to do is have a nice trip and thank, thank you. you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. That's why you have time on two watches. Two watches, yeah. So if one misses it, the other one has it. <laughs> Bye. Bye.